You know what I done did over the weekend? What you don't do? I went down to that damn there Virginia. Ooh, why? Went to Shenandoah. It's a national park. It's supposed to be the tits, the cow's teats, I believe. Was it? You know what? I can't rightly say it was. I went up in that damn there mountain, and I came down, and I wasn't a changed man. I was still an angry, bitter little man. I didn't like it, and I don't think I'll ever like it. They had one road gone down through that mountain, and it just went for 100,892 kilometers or something. It was also 2,000 acres of bullshit. Straight up bullshit, if you know what I'm saying, boy. But then... Then we bailed on the park because it was so stupid that we went to the beach. And you know what it did? It did them that did them that did it did and now they did now they did in their beach. <laughs> Make it a sandcastle? No, it rained. <laughs> it poured down rain and we wanted to go see the Neptune statue. And I was like, ooh, that better be a cool ass statue. And we could see it in the distance. But you know what? The beach plays tricks on you because it's <laughs> flat. So it was not like in the distance. It was like uh, 27 miles away. And we walked and we walked and we walked some more. And then it pulled down rain and it got all over my jimmy. And then I got all wet and we went in the bathroom. And some old man said, you in the Marines, boy? And I said, no, sir, I rightly ain't. And he said, mm-hmm. And then he left. And then, and then, and then I walked all the way down to the Neptune statue Took a picture. Walked on back. And walked all the way back 27 miles on the beach this time. And you know what it did that next picture? It stopped raining. Rain. It stopped raining. And I laid in the sun. And I was out for 10 minutes and got burnt. (laughs) And then I drank some whiskey. And then we went to some old diner. And waited for two hours for our food. And then came home and said, ain't nobody going to Virginia ever again. There's my boy Rex. How did he get down here? It looked like he flew down them stairs. He didn't even touch him. I tell you what. That's like a mismatch of every awful southern accent stereotype. (laughs) I just just want to know, when, when you had the idea of going down to the park to begin with, what were you expecting? Would there not be a shit show? Like I've been to a lot of national parks and they usually have cool shit to do. But Shenandoah had woods. Just wood. I smell... It smells like glue or something. Yeah. Somebody huffing up there. What's up, Nitro? What are you doing down here, bro? I shut... The, I completely shut the door. I think he could open it. I think he opens it because he grew thumbs over the Ooh, overnight. Hey man, Ooh, you're, bud. you're like, oh, he's, he's involved. Hey, hey, over here, bud. Over you're wrapped here. up. Hey, over you want to speak? You want to say anything to the the fans? Woo! Nothing. Come on. I can hear his loud breath. <laughs> yeah. He's like tired because he ran down those stairs. Regardless, uh, the beach was okay, but you can't go out really. Like you can go to restaurants and stuff, but it's not fun. Did you try to see if there was, like, a bookstore or anything nearby, like, you could have checked out, or... Well, when we were by Shenandoah, there was a couple Barnes and Nobles and stuff, nothing real fancy, but there was some bookstores we drove through, like, some little towns, but everything was closed, mm. so... Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, with everything going on, yeah. Yeah, well, down in Virginia, they take it very seriously. Like, we were hiking, and people would pass you and hurry up and throw their mask on, and I was like, whoa, we're from Pennsylvania, apparently everybody up here just is like, man, I don't care, it ain't real, it's fake news... But down there, they actually put the mask on everywhere, and it's very proper about it. I was like, oh, well, probably don't have a lot of cases, I would imagine. Well, I know that there for a while, like, when it first started, they were, like, one of the, like, one of the few states that didn't have, like, a lot of cases. Yeah. I don't know what it is, like, now, but... Mm, hard to say. But that was my, uh, journey down to Virginia. And so, all in all, if you had a chance to do it again, would you have just skipped it? I, initially, I wanted to go to Delaware Beach and not anywhere near Virginia because I've never been to Delaware. And I figured I wouldn't be that busy. But the hurricane hit like a week before. And I was uh, like, well, I'm sure the whole coast is pretty shitty. But then again, Virginia Beach was all right by now. There was a lot of things flooded, though. It was raining super hard. But to make things a little better, as we left Virginia Beach, the sun came out on this beautiful day and we had to leave. <laughs> that seems about right. Yeah. Regardless, I probably won't go down that way for a while. Go do something else. That didn't enter, didn't enter, didn't enter, beat one.
What's another good accent? Sling Blade. Mm. Was that more of an accent or like just a disability? <laughs> I think it was a disability. French fried potato. Mm-hmm. I queen split his head in twine. The uh, equipment guy from the Water Boy. Is that what he was? The equipment guy? The, the name like <laughs> Hillbilly Jim or Hobo something Joe like, or something? Something like that. Home wearing maggot. <laughs> you like to see homos naked? Home wearing maggot. Yeah, that guy's everybody know that there, there boy. Mm. Yeah, he was kind of like a inspiration for my horrible Southern accent. Probably just whatever I watch, Adam Sandler movies I watched growing up has mismatched Southern people in my mind. I guess we should get to the episode. Yeah, probably. Sorry, folks. Sorry for my Virginia listeners. I know nobody down there talks <laughs> in a Southern accent at all because it's not really the South. Oh, there's more Southern accents here than oh, Virginia. Uh, and it's like you don't, you're not. Oh, you're not Confederates. Yeah. You're never part of the Confederacy. Why are you hanging up the stupid flags? You're in fucking Pennsylvania. You were born and raised in Pennsylvania. You, ooh, Gettysburg. Gettysburg is around <laughs> here. I mean, not here, but, you know, five hours away. But still. I get angry. It's so mad. I just don't like fucking these hillbillies around here. Alabama man. <laughs> Hey there, fine listeners. This is the Drunken Pen Writing Podcast. We're still testing our audio, so bear with us. I think it's better this time. Now we're farther away from the mics. Yeah. Hopefully less muddy to work in progress, learning how to redo all this stuff with a weird, closed-in, normal atmosphere that's better for sound quality, I guess. Also, we do need better mics, but they're expensive, so that's going to be a while before we get to that. But if you're listening to us for 100 plus episodes, you probably don't give a shit. Right. You're just like, I love those guys' sexy voices. Now I'm your host. Got a dog hair in my mouth. Nope, that's pubic hair. Um, <laughs> I'm your host, Caleb James. <laughs> With me today, Spencer. The You know what? No, I'm changing it. Okay. I don't want Dakota. Change I want it. Denver. We <laughs> haven't used Denver yet. All right. Spencer, the Denver Dunce Church. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't want to waste Dakota because there's two of them. North and, I believe... South, not east and west. I don't know why. I feel like there should be. I want. There's never an east and west anything, is there? East and west Germany, I get. Ooh, that yeah. didn't end well. Coasts. Um, today's episode, you might not be able to tell by the title because I don't know what I made the title yet. We're talking about books, man. But you know what kind of books? Shitty ones. Ones we didn't finish. I want to start this conversation by saying I asked some people on the old tweeter, how long do they give a book? Or rather, how long would you give a book, open to T fans, how long would you give a book before you just give up on it? Like if it's either badly written or you're just not enjoying it, it's boring, whatever it is. The consensus is, it's actually pretty mixed. I've had some people say, you have to finish. You never give up on a book. I used to be like that, but after Moby the Dick, I am not like that anymore. That's what broke you. I did finish that book, but I cheated 70 plus chapters. I skipped. Uh, I've had people say that they'll give it 50 pages, which seems reasonable. Yeah. Some people just say they get to the halfway point, and if nothing happens that they're interested by, then they'll give up on it. And I've had a couple diehards say they give it one chapter. And if they're not hooked in that one chapter, they throw it in the trash. I used to tell those people, hey, fuck you, man, that ain't cool. That author put a lot of hard work into that book, and it probably gets better. Especially, too, you spent the money on that book. Yeah. Like- well, if it's a library book, maybe not. But, as I've gotten older and I've realized there's 6,000 books just on my shelf that I want to read, you kind of have to do that or you're never going to, you know, get to what you like. Why spend time reading something you're not liking? Right. Uh, So, I'm going to open that question to you, Spencer. How long do you give a book you're not liking before you abandon it? See, um... I know you normally finish your books, like you're like me, but just even if it's hypothetical. I would say, for me, so far, my... All like the novels that I've read are things that I pretty much knew that I was gonna like going forward. Anyway, so I haven't really had that problem. But yeah, I could see anywhere from like a chapter to like fifty pages because you think that that should give you at least two chapters, you know, most of a third to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Now I will. Well, have there ever been a book you read where you thought about abandoning it because it just wasn't doing it for you, but then it got better? 
Because for me, uh, like Notes from the Underground from Dostoevsky, the first half of that is just rambling, and I hated it, and I was so close. I was a nut hair away from just saying, fuck this book, throw it in the trash. And then it got to a story, and I really liked the second half of the book. Hmm. So it was literally like a tale of two halves. I've, um, trying to think of, now Moby Dick would, I guess, be the other version. I started Moby Dick and really enjoyed it, and then it just got super boring, and then yeah. I ended up wanting to just fucking quit. Yeah, I mean, there's been some times like that, whenever, um, by the end I might not have been as much into it by the beginning, but at that point I'm just like, there's not that much left. Yeah, just finish it. Just finish it. And then too, because I also kind of, like, uh, fall in the, in the school of, like, if I don't finish it, it's going to be kind of, if I have uh, bad things to say about it or yeah, whatever, you can't I feel judge. like it doesn't have an, enough merit behind it, you know? Like, with TV shows, I have no problems just abandoning. Like, if I'm not, like, like even if it's a show I really like, like, when I used to watch The Flash and stuff, yeah. even if the quality just started to drop off a little bit, I could just go, like, in my rationale, I'm just like, I don't really care enough anymore, and I got plenty of other things to watch or do. I just, I'll stop watching. Well, and the way things are now, like, you can always just be like, you know what, I'm going to stop now if later... I can, you know, get caught up on next mm. Netflix or whatever, you know, if it's something like that. Because, like, the, sh- the shows I always used to be, like, very, like, diehard and, like, would watch, like, every episode of stuff. But it's, like, this year, and I don't know if it's just because with everything that is, like, happening, you think I would have more time to watch the shows. Right. But it's just something, like, I'm just, like... I don't know. I'm just not in like you know don't when care. I yeah as much on a, on much on much things. There are still some things that you know I make sure to try to watch and I'm trying to finish up now. Well, there's some things that I just didn't get around to, even though I enjoyed them. Like yeah. uh, As for Evil Dead, I never watched the yeah. last season. Yeah, I gotta watch the last season of that too. Again, that's just you know media overload. But the strange thing is, movies. Once I start watching a movie. I, maybe if it's like a Gone with the Wind type of really old movie and I'm just, I didn't get into it from the beginning, I can kind of bail on those. But for the most part, especially modern movies, I can't bail on them, yeah. even if they're shitty. Like, I've watched so many awful movies with Mindy, like Fifty Shades of Grey. I watched the whole thing while she fell asleep. But you also have a thing for, like, terrible movies. I mean, yeah. I know there's, there's, like, there's terrible movies and, like, there's terrible movies. I, I know that you, especially, like, the ones that, like, are, that are supposed to be terrible, uh-huh. I know you kind of you kind of like those just for the bad factor of them, or the cheap or whatever, you know, whatever it is. There's a few movies that are so bad, and it's usually, like, a lot of B-level horror movies yeah. and stuff that it's just literally boring and you just don't want to watch it. I, I could bail on those, but those are, like, if I pay money for it, I'm not bailing on that yeah. fucking thing. If, even if it was $2 a rental, I'm just, I gotta watch it. Uh, but books, I've learned I, that's not necessary, even if it was an expensive book. I just am really disappointed. Yeah. To the mood, to go back to the movies, I've only walked out of one movie in the movie theaters. Now, before you tell me that movie, I just want to point out that you watched the whole fucking Fantastic Four reboot. Yeah. You've watched Green Lantern. Y- yes. Um, all the all the previous X Men movies. You've watched every X Men movie, <laughs> including the fucking last one, the Phoenix one that was awful. Yeah. You've watched Bloodshot. Uh, you watched Shitty Bloodshot, <laughs> which I just I one of my favorite characters did not watch the movie. You also watched all the Ghost Rider movies, yeah. which were not good because I rewatched the first one not too long, like right before I moved. Oh yeah. And I did not realize that. It was so obviously a soundstage most of oh. the time. Uh, but go on. What's the movie you want? How, how, I want to know how shitty of a movie it had to be for you to walk out of it. What it, was it? The second Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I think it was the second one. Really? It was, it was the second one. Well, because what it was, like, I hadn't watched any of them. And, like, this was back whenever, like, because me and a group of my friends would, like, you know, every, like, Friday or Saturday, we'd all go and see, like, a movie. Yeah. And then, like, go to, like, Applebee's or something or whatever. See, I like those movies. Yeah. And, well, see, like I said, I didn't watch any of them. I might have been the third one. It, it, it was, it was, whatever. They do the, get progressively worse. I say, it, it was, like, one, one of the worst ones that. It's probably the third or fourth one, the, I would imagine. And, yeah, like, halfway through, uh, me and another friend of mine just bailed where everybody else stayed and yeah and it was it was just bad i was a surprise because i think the fantastic four you would have bailed on 
No, because I I was digging the Fantastic Four until they got their powers. Uh, until that, it was like a cool kind of like sci-fi movie. What about comics? I that feel was, like you've bailed because I know I bailed on a lot of comics. Was, Usually yeah. series that not just an individual comic, but a series I'll give up on. I was gonna say where this would probably apply more to me would be into like the comic book stuff, like Black Hole, like Black Hole. <laughs> um, a thing that I need to um kind of focus on more of books. To, to let go, because there are, like, um, to give an example, there's this Green Lantern series going on right now that's written by Grant Morrison, one of the greatest comic book writers ever, and it is just terrible. A rare miss. Yeah, for the past, like, year and a half, he's been writing, and, like, every couple issues, it'd be, like, a thing, like, oh, that was kind of cool, but on the whole, I've hated it. But just give it up, man. <laughs> no, because I've had the I've had the last decades worth of Green Lantern books, and whenever he gets done writing it, and the next team takes over, I'm probably gonna pick the book back up to at least try it. So I'll be damned if I'm gonna have like a six issue gap. Oh come in my, on, in my Green Lantern for, for no reason. <laughs> it's obsessive. Um, but yeah, there's there's many things uh, of of like that, or um, uh, I've noticed there's some things that I've. Uh, they kind of gave up the single issues on and has gone just to, like, trades on, on a lot of things just to um to read it like that. Just. Yeah, it's easier. I've given up on a lot of indie books. Um, I can't remember the last comic or trade I've given up on. I know I gave up on that one for the book club that was about, like, witches or some shit. I just I made it barely halfway and said, fuck this. There's a couple other ones we've read on, uh, in the book club that I almost bailed on, yeah. but I finished, but well, barely. Well, well, remember, there was a couple we didn't even bother getting. Yeah, there's sometimes we just showed up and ate the food and didn't get the book at all. And I feel like we didn't miss anything. No. I'm trying to, I feel like I haven't really, like, skipped too many. Like, I, there's some indie novels I've given up on, but I was just kind of reading those as a favor to begin with. And I was just like, yeah. Like, a lot of those, it's either the writing or, uh. Sometimes it's just, it's not my genre, too. Yeah. I've had that happen where somebody sends me a book or something, and... It's just it, not in your work. I, I yeah, I like. dig their writing, but I, I might not be into steampunk or something, or romance, or whatever it may be. So, I'm just like, I'll, I'll write a couple pages, and I'm like, I'm not gonna get interested in this. And... and I know my taste, and my tastes are pretty eclectic. I can read a lot of things. It's just certain things, especially like even like hard fantasy fairy fiction, I can try it, and I just... It it doesn't click with me. Do you think you could read Peter Pan? I don't think I would like Peter Pan. I think it would be kind of stupid for me. Though I have been gravitating more towards, like, kind of fantasy adventure stuff lately. Uh, like we were talking about, you we're doing the King Arthur series. Uh, those are a little more classic, but I would like to read, like, Robin Hood. Uh, yeah, Robin Hood would have been something Maybe Tarzan. Would. We did the Conan stuff. See, the sword and sorcery and adventure stuff, I can dig more than just straight, like, Lord of the Rings kind of stuff. Uh, but even more hardcore is, like, the fairy fiction, because that's a huge genre right now, and I just can't get into that. You know, it, it's a weird... For me, sometimes it's the pen, it depends on the medium in which I'm consuming the... Because, like, fantasy novels... I can be, like, very wary on. But, but in a comic form. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just because it has that visual aspect to, to I show I feel sci-fi is the wit same for me. I There's a lot of sci-fi books where I might not necessarily get into it too much, but sci-fi comics, like, I'm all about. Yeah. Uh, even westerns and stuff. I think westerns might, like, an old classic western novel, might, it'd probably be pretty dry, but in a comic version, yeah. those are fun, usually. Same with, like, a lot of war fiction. I find war fiction could be very tedious and boring sometimes because they focus too much on tactical stuff. But if, if you, you read want, it in comic or, form... Or, like, watch a war movie. Yeah, or that's something. different. I would like to get into more fantasy stuff, like, more hard fantasy stuff, but I just don't know where I would even... Like, I was trying to read that Michael Moorcock, uh, Eric of Malibane series, and I, haven't, I just haven't got around to it. But when I tried to start it the one time... I read the first page and I was just kind of bailed because it was, I was like, I'm not ready for this. I got to mentally prepare. This is a little too hard for me. Well, like I said, if you ever wanted to try those, um, 
any of those magician books because they're like an, a, an, a, a, a fantasy, you know, mad, you know, there's magic and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, and like, I really enjoyed those. And um, it's kind of like an adult theme, kind of like Harry Potter, right. like a college version of Harry Potter. Like, I think you'd maybe enjoy those. And they're only normally like 300, maybe 350 at the most. So it's not like it's like this huge, long thing that you normally get with like a fiction kind of or like a fantasy kind of story. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to novels, you, I mean, we talked many times about you've been working through Stephen King's collection. Yeah. So you haven't strayed too far other than the stuff we read on yeah. here and some random things. It's start, starting to now, starting to yeah. branch out a little bit. Uh, so you probably won't have this problem. But bailing on a series, I'm having this with that uh, Yukio Mishima's Tetralogy. I'm on the third book, halfway through the third book. And with the move and stuff, I know I didn't give the attention I normally would. But this one's mostly about uh, like reincarnation and all this stuff. And it goes into great detail about Buddhism. And I am struggling, but I wanted to finish the series. Like, it's hard to bail on something when you want to finish the series. Is this the last one in the series? One more. So maybe, like, my advice would maybe go and try to read some other things like you kind of did with Moby Dick. And maybe after you can come back to mm-hmm. it, and maybe it won't be as much of a... And then maybe hopefully you can get through that, like, the Buddhist stuff. And maybe, it, you know, get back to a better kind of story, you know, elements right. that you enjoy more. That's another thing I was worried about. I like I read the first Dune and I really liked it, but what if I got to Dune? Like I read that series and I got the Dune number seven or something, and then I just like what happened to me with Hitchhikers. All of a sudden, it's I don't like it anymore, yeah. or the writing's changed or got boring or something, and then I feel compelled to finish the series, but I don't want to. That's where I would like I wouldn't try to go anything over like a trilogy. Mm-hmm. Because once you get into, like, 15, 16 books, like, all right, man, I get it, but what else could you possibly, possibly be yeah. fucking ter- ter- telling in this story, like? Well, that's why I didn't get into the Expanse books, because there's so many of those, and I feel like I would eventually get bored. I, I stopped watching the TV show, not because it got worse in quality or anything, I just got kind of tired of seeing the same story. Yeah. Like, the same universe and stuff. I... And that, and I don't that, like spending too much time in the same universe, whereas a lot of people like expanded universes. I normally don't. And like, and I've only just from seeing like the first season that's shown how like sci-fi and like tech it is. And from what I've heard, like the tech is very like the science is very solid. Yeah. On the things, so imagine reading that. I would have to think hard unless, sci-fi is not my wheelhouse. I mean, unless if they can do a um. Uh, like the Martian, yeah, kind of, kind of route. That's the closest to hard sci-fi I've gotten that I really enjoyed, and that's just because Andy Weir did an excellent job of making it entertaining. For both and that books. was through his, that was through his character, yeah, through both books, Artemis as well. But a lot of sci-fi writers, hard sci-fi and tech sci-fi and all that stuff, they go into the details, but they don't have a funny character, you know, explaining yeah. it or something. It's more of a Either the, you kind of feel like the author's just telling you cool stuff they learn, and you get a little bored. Not like Polly Cooley with the Black Series, the first one we read, he made me interested in oil drilling. Yeah. Like, he did a really good job, again, through the characters explaining what was going on. So there's a very precise way you can it's, do it to make it interesting and fun. And that's another thing. Like, that's the, there's two at least two more books in that series right now. I want to read those. I have not read those. Yeah. Or, um, um, uh, what's his name? The zombie. I got Ray Wink's fucking Island of the Dead sitting on my shelf, and I keep looking at it, and I'm going, I, it's not going to take long, and I really like the first one. Or Hair of the Dog. Yeah. Um, I feel so bad that I haven't gotten to his other books. I just haven't had time, but I really enjoyed that book, and I want to get to the other ones to see where the story goes, because it was, like, by the end, it was a cliffhanger, yeah. I remember, I think I, from what I remember, it was like, I want to know where this goes. But it was like, wow, we have another fucking book we got to read for book cast. And then we just, I just never got around to getting them. And like now, because, you know, we, we keep on coming up with all these ideas of things we want to do for like Halloween and stuff. We still got James Bond, King Arthur to do. And we want to read Dracula. And then, then even, I, and then even before that, we were talking about the first uh, John Carter book, maybe. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, just like. And I got a bunch of submissions already coming in. I'm going to pass them off to Ashley to read. He can judge. <laughs> there you go. 
So, folks, if you get rejected, By just Megan. know Ashley's harsher than I am. So, <laughs> he'll go, I didn't care for the name. I'm like, <laughs> well, I see, sir. I should probably give that a look because I don't know if that's a righteous critique or not. Percy, their name's Percy, huh? Okay, that's fine. Give her a cut. I don't want to need no fucking Percy on my site. Apologize to Master P. <laughs> Master Percy. <laughs> Why did I name your kid Percy? That seems like that's only a cool name if you're like an ancient Greek. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, Percy is. It depends where the, uh, when your story takes place. If I was, if my parents named me Percy, I would go around telling everybody my name's Perseus. Percy's mm. short for Perseus. Only call me Perseus. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm Perseus. And then they'd call you Pussy. Or <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not getting out of it. I'd go probably go by Master P, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could pull it off, though. No. No, I'm probably not uh, hip enough. Cool enough. Uh. So, um, to, since we were talking about, you know, when you should end a book, what about here we, we take a moment and, you know, look at it from the other end, from our work, and uh, maybe think of things that you can maybe... Uh, like uh, tropes that you fall in or stuff you can do to make it so people don't want to drop your, you know. The important people. thing is you have to start out hot. This isn't like the old days, like the Yuki Mishima books I read. I will say you could tell what John or what era he was writing in because older books before the 50s often had cold, what I call cold starts where you you might be introduced to the characters in their universe slightly, but you come... Like, there's a lot of themes and ideas that are already coming up, and you don't really get into the meat of the story for a while. So you just have to be kind of invested in the author. You know, you read an Ernest Hemingway book, you know Ernest Hemingway, that's why you're reading that book. Yeah. You, you're you not going to go into one of his books expecting a hot start. But I think as modern writers, you have to have a hot start. If not the first paragraph, definitely the first chapter. You have to catch the reader. Yeah, that, that chapter has to have some kind of twist or mm. hook or something to give the reader... Well, to get past an agent or an editor or a publishing house, usually you have to have like a first-page hook. Yeah. Uh, that's not necessary for the readers, but you definitely want to get into the meat of the matter. Start off with... It doesn't have to be extreme drama. We've talked about this before. You don't need to start your story off with a big explosion. It helps, yeah. depending on the genre and what you're writing. But maybe somebody just died. Maybe there was a divorce. Maybe you want something to happen fairly quickly. And then you can kind of cool down the story a little bit if you want and work out those themes and ideas. But you definitely have to catch the reader right away. That's the most important thing. In modern fiction, I believe. Mm. Because, like, how many books have you read uh, where you wanted to bail because the story was boring? Probably not many because you read a lot of Stephen King. Yeah. And, that's, he's, and Joe Hill. They're yeah. both known for hot Hook, starts. And then hooking you in with a weird concept. Yeah. Right? The, the, again, that could be a part of the drama. It doesn't have to be an actual horrible thing happening. It could be the concept's pretty fucking wild. Like, the hike. Yeah. You get in because you already know the concept's going to be wild. And... You're immediately drawn to the character because he's kind of funny. Yeah. There wasn't drama at the beginning of that. It was a couple ch- – they're quick chapters, but a couple chapters in before crazy shit started to happen. But you get hooked in because the character development and there was slight drama because he's away from his family already. So you know that's going to come up later. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be something hugely significant at the moment. You just want that seed so the well, reader yeah, knows something's going to happen. Some foreshadowing. Yeah. Because any, you know – any good reader worth their salt, when if they read something there, there, and if you've done your job right, they'll be able to pick up on you know on the seeds that that you hope on. You yeah. Know, at least hopefully, or at least if they don't get it, you know, right away, subconsciously they get it. So later on, whenever that seed grows, they're like, oh, and they don't they don't even realize it, but they mm-hmm. get it. Uh, it's a very tricky thing, and a lot of up-and-coming writers do have trouble with that, I noticed. They go either too hard into trying to catch the reader, they try too hard, or they just fail. They don't, because you could offend the reader, too. And I'm not talking about with language or anything that would actually offend them to the point of like, Ugh, fuck this guy, he's a misogynist or something. I'm talking about offending them as in, ah, oh, this is just unrealistic, this is yeah. fucking stupid. 
Like, you're not going to start off with a guy hanging from an airplane, shooting a machine gun at sharks over the ocean. That would be ridiculous. I mean, unless it's Tom Cruise is doing it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mission Impossibles always start off with some crazy shit, don't they? Probably, yeah, I think so. I don't really watch them, but... Yeah, I haven't watched any of those. Die Hard, they all start off, you know, with a a bang, but... uh, Flash and and Furious movies? Yeah, fucking Tokyo Drifting and stuff, but those are mindless. I would imagine that kind of read would be a mindless read. It would be a fluff read. There's nothing wrong. There, again, genre is obviously important to this. Because, like, if you think about it, even like uh, a lot of pulp fiction, yeah, you could say it's kind of fluffy, you know. Well, because I would, they were just trying to, you know. I would say modern fiction has originated from pulp fiction because pulp fiction had to catch the reader right away because it was magazines. Um, you're not gonna be able to tell a hugely long, expansive story in a magazine. You have to. Get to the point. Um, and then obviously, like Raymond Chandler, you know, you want to start off some introducing the characters and the world, and then some shooting and some nasty stuff, some detective shit, drinking, lots of drinking. Uh, James Bond, I would imagine, would be similar. You know what else we're gonna have to check out? Like some Sherlock Holmes stories. We've been talking about that for months, yeah. years, years, decades. When we started this podcast in, I Before. think, 1927? <laughs> yeah. Is that the year? I think we were the first podcast, yeah. We had that big old radio. <laughs> hey, Lord, folks, we got the podcast from the deep. You couldn't say drunk back then. You yeah. had to say inebriated yeah. writing pen or something. Quill. Quill. <laughs> <laughs> Feather. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've exhausted that about well, uh, enough. Real quick, we just talking about things that we can't. Would you say me um, this this uh, extended break that I've taken from Lovecraft? Uh, would you can consider that of a, uh, a bailing. A bailing. No, because I did the same thing. It's if you go back to it. But well, that's different because that's short stories. You didn't bail mid story, did you? No, I don't think so. You finished the last story. That's the important thing. You can do that with short story collections. Now, if you're reading Mountains of Madness and you bailed halfway through and never read it again, that's bailing. That's uh, giving up. But it is a fine line because I could see you just going, I don't really need to read the yeah, rest like, of I'm it. I'm 25% through his stuff. I think I have a pretty uh, a good idea on his writing style. I was so happy that I read all his stuff until I found that other complete edition that had more stuff. See, that's why, why do they always lie? See, that's why I think, like, my... Because the thing I got is on Kindle. Yeah. So that's what I think it is. I think it's, like, the complete, like, everything on it. Yeah, but they always do that with Edgar Allan Poe. Then they release one that has more. It's like, when did this shit come out? Ed, Edgar Allan Poe's a good example of someone I've almost quit on multiple times because his early short stories are in fucking French and German and all this weird shit, and I'm just not into it sometimes. Or plays. he did, I think he had, like, a random play, and um, there's a couple other authors that just decide mid-story or mid-collection. They just want to throw a play in there, and I don't like reading plays. I don't know why. I just don't. What's a weird, like, format? It makes me mad. Yeah, Betsy. Fuck you in the butt. Carl, I will like that. Betsy, I don't want to go back and forth with the name. Just fucking do it. Just write it on the narrative. Fucking use some prose. Class it up. Is there anything on that shelf you'd bail on, you think? Um, I would probably <laughs> bail on... I'd, I'd probably bail on Moby Dick since you couldn't even get through it. Yes, you would definitely. Yeah. Uh... I think you're going to bail on Frankenstein. I do. Yeah? I think you, that's going to oh, be yeah. your bail. Because I almost bailed on Frankenstein. It was so boring. All right. Um, I mean, I could probably see me uh, bailing on like the Count of Monte Cristo just because of how big that thing is. But I think there's a lot of action. But I'm, what I'm worried about is how we talk about like those er, like those, those old stories is like the writing style. Like, I don't know, like, how is, like, the speaking and, like, the, like you know what I mean? The describing of things. Is it even going to make sense to me? Some of that gobbledygook backward talk. I think you'd bail on Anna Karenina. I'm iffy on... I think you could finish 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but I think you're going to gloss over a lot of it like I did. Like, mm. the scientific shit. It's just boring. I didn't get to 12 Years a Slave yet, but I really like the movie, so I think I would like the book. It's very. It's not that long. I can't see what the fuck's over there. I know I got, uh, uh, those, all those books in white, except for the F. Scott Fitzgerald's collection, I think I would probably, you know, have a good chance of bailing on. Anna Karenina, though, I think I'm gonna 
I've been trying to read that for years, but I never open it <laughs> because it's so <laughs> girthy. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. So I think it's about aristocrats and stuff. I don't care, especially in Russia. And, and like, you know, like, I don't necessarily like reading about rich people now. Why do I want to read about rich people centuries ago? I don't remember if you read this, but I almost bailed. And this classic literature, it's obviously easier to bail on because it's fucking long and dry. But modern literature that I've almost bailed on, was it Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk? You let me borrow it. I haven't opened it. It's it's really, really gross, but I found that I just did not want to fucking complete it. I did, but I just found it to be gross and I, stupid. And, and I remember you telling me about that, cause, and I think that's why I haven't even started it, because, like, I read Fight Club. Yeah. Because a guy, uh, shout out to Alan, who we used to work with back in the day, he let me borrow uh, Fight Club. I think he let me borrow Choke, and then... Um, like flight i think it's about yeah. like a suicide guy like a guy who survives the cold and stuff like that and like those were really good the flight one had this cool thing where whenever you started reading it like say it was like um 350 pages it was just like say if that was where it, like the amount that's the first page you read and as you read the pages counted down oh, that's instead cool. of count like you know what i mean because it was also kind of like i think added to like it's something's going down. Like what's gonna happen? I'll something's have like, to. I'll have to give him a read because the only thing I read was haunted, and that was yeah, awful. Yeah, I, I would say check out even like yeah, because I know you probably watched like you know we were in the same age, watched Fight Club like a million yeah. times. I would still say read Fight Club. Yeah, like you know what I mean. It's still just the way he uh, um, does things, like you know his, his describing of things and just the time, and especially because you kind of you know you already know how gonna. You know how it ends and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Which so it also ends kind of different in the book too. Yeah, it doesn't have the same shit blowing up. I remember seeing that. But see, and that's another thing. Like I never, um, I tried because they've done like second, third, and fourth of Fight Club in comic books, and I bought like the first series, and like I tried it, and I was like, this is kind of weird. And then I never, I stopped, and I never got back uh, to it. And yeah. then I don't even think I picked up the other issues. You know, what's another. I, I I didn't bail on the whole book. Clive Barker's Books of Blood. I read the first volume. I think it's like a one through six or so. I forget. It's like, but it's it's pretty big. It's a shitload of stories. I ha- I did bail on some of those stories because they're just too dated. It just didn't you know resonate with me in, in the modern age here. Things in the eighties sometimes are like, <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, just use your cell phone. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, you got shoulder pads on. But for the most part, yeah, I haven't bailed on too many books. And when I was a kid, I bailed on books a lot more than I do, you know, have ever have in my adulthood. Because when I was a kid, I read a lot of stuff that was kind of gross. <laughs> you know, just like... You really? You know, really? Gross stuff and horror huh. stuff. But yeah, that seems completely off brand brand for you. The articles were so good. <laughs> they really were. In the... Uh, shut up. In those things, in those magazines you found out in the woods? No, my uncle had them in the tiles in our old house in the ceiling. You're probably going to find some porn out in your woods somewhere. It'll probably be some fucking stupid old hustler that I see inside of people's vulvas. <laughs> Gross. I think I could see that woman's cervix. Ugh. <laughs> like, who's getting off on that? Larry Flint's a weird dude. <laughs> What did Norm Macdonald say? He had a fucking joke about something. I think it was the Hustler Mansion, or I forget oh, what man, it was. I don't know, man. But he was talking about Larry Flint, and he was like, "Imagine if you fucking you'd be doing a chick or something at Larry Flint's house, and he just rolls in with his wheelchair, <laughs> and you just sit in the corner, going, ah! <laughs> I'm like, oh god, that'd be so horrible." <laughs> but he made it sound like Frankenstein, like he made it sound like a deaf mute. Like, ah! I was like, "What the hell?" Pretty sure the guy can talk normal. <laughs> No, I think he had a stroke, too, I think. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that would be recently, then. I don't know. I don't know. He's had a weird life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know you know, you've had a weird life whenever Woody ha- Harrison has to play you yeah. in, in your movie. And Courtney Love does a good job in the movie. That's a weird one, too. Uh, if you folks have read some books you've bailed on, let us know. And if you want to join that conversation on Twitter, I don't even remember which if it was DPW or my personal one, but you can... Just message us, yeah, or something, and just tell us how you feel about band abandoning books for. Oh, you know what? What? That's another one we didn't really touch on is why you would abandon a book, though. I mean, we kind of alluded to boring, or for me, the most 
direct way for me to just say fuck this book like the reason that i would really abandon it is if the writing sucks yeah if it's just full of grammatical errors like an indie book or it's just fucking a lot of times present tense books kind of piss me off if they're not done well uh i just don't like that writing style it depends on the writer like a lot of writers can get away with it but i just don't care for that as much but yeah, if a writing like uh the road with Cormac McCarthy, I almost wanted to bail, even though I was really liking the story because the writing style was fucking hot dog shit in my opinion. And then obviously if a book's boring, I I'll read it longer and eventually just fizzle out. Yeah. If it's just boring. Um and I've almost abandoned of uh that grotesque book. I forget who wrote that as a Japanese novel. Because the characters were all so despicable that I was just like, I don't fucking care what happens to any of these people. <laughs> if it wasn't about hookers, I wouldn't have finished it. <laughs> Honestly. But anyway, if you folks, would you want to add anything to that? Or? No, that seems about yeah, that seems sums, reason, yeah. sums it up. Hookers is if you know. Yeah, but if you folks have uh, any ideas, uh, or rather any opinions you want to share on this topic, let us know and we'll... I'm sure we'll talk about it later. We like, can talk about it again. I don't like know. 30 uh, episodes from now when we're mm-hmm. grasping for some, something to talk about. Yeah, we're always grasping. Uh, if you want to submit to our Halloween submission period, you can go to our website and look that up. It's uh, short stories, poems, and flash fiction. I believe the flash fiction is around 500 words tops. The max for short stories 5,000. And the poems are 82 lines. You can submit up to three poems. Again, just general horror theme. We don't want any... uh, Gore's fine. Maybe not super excessive, but gore's fine. But we don't want any erotica. We don't need none of that smut. Uh, We don't need no crucifixes and magines unless you're twisting, you know, be whatever. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think I really have to say this, but we have gotten this in the past. Oh, have we? Yeah, well, not not the erotica. We generally don't accept hard fantasy, even if it's horror. I did publish one that was more fantasy, like a horror fantasy, but it was really well, it was well, very well written. It was just teetering that line of like, well, this is almost just straight fantasy. It was like elves and t- shit, like, but it was horror. But if you want to submit, you want to do that. Fairly soon, because we are filling up quick already. Uh, we might even extend that past the... Well, the publishing, we might have to extend that into November even. Yeah. Um, and I this year we are going to read well, some... We know we start a little bit early, too. Yeah, true. This year... Well, I already started publishing some horror poems that I forgot. Uh, this year we are going to read more on the air, too. More stories and stuff. So, you know, if you get your submission, probably read it on... A, be a Friday podcast or something like that. Story cast. And uh, if you want to check us out on the old internets other than the website, you can go to Twitter at Drunk Pen Writing. Where are we on the Instagram? Huh, Spencer? Uh, probably like Drunk Pen Writing. Drunken Pen, pen writing. writing. It has the E-N. Because yeah. Twitter won't let us do that. Too long. Too long. Too long for Twitter and not long enough for Instagram. They wanted extra they want a drunk pen writing with two guys with medium sized dicks. <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, Facebook, you can go there probably. It's Facebook backslash drunk pen writing dot org. Does org? Organization on there. No, it's not dot org. Uh, you can go on there and give us the business or whatever. We might read it one day. I don't know why I shit on the Facebook so much because we get a lot of something like we get interaction on there. I just. I'm so angry for my personal one that by the time I get there, I don't even want to want to look at it. And we probably should start like, what the fuck other social media that would be better? I've been looking. Um, like Goodreads is too doesn't work when you don't have books. It's not really worth it. Like for an actual publisher, it doesn't seem to work. If you're an individual author, it's a good platform. I don't know how to do Snapchat, so I'm not allowed to have it, and I don't need it. <laughs> I. uh... <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't know what else there is. It's like the TikTok, but that'd be pointless. We're just gonna fucking here's the book, here's how you read it, and then do a shitty dance. And you know, I don't want China to know all my stuff. Isn't that aren't they doing that through the TikTok? Isn't that the? I don't know. Maybe we'll join Kanye West's Christian TikTok, his Christian talk or whatever he's making. Oh really? Can you see that? You hear about that? You see about that? I did not, and I don't want to. Looks like a shit idea to me. All right, folks, thanks for listening. Uh, 
Check yourselves in the mirror, because you know what? You are beautiful. No matter what Spencer says. Goodbye. See ya. French fried potatoes. Mm-hmm.